Hey everybody, just grabbing a soda before I get started. Um, we're moving on to the next stage of my coach house with interior, playable interior as a giveaway for getting 500 followers. Uh, this thing will be totally fold flat, fit in an envelope, so I'm going to give it away to one of my followers uh, as soon as I reach 500, um, and I'll send it to you in the mail anywhere in the world. So, I'm not waiting for anybody. Uh, today we're working on the roof, uh, but I do want to show the progress I've made so far. So here is the model. This is made out of all full flat pieces. If you've been following my Instagram, you've seen photos of the stack. This is every piece I've made so far. So I've got the tile, all these things slide together. Tab, it's tab and tab and you can see the you know, tab and slot construction. Uh, it's got even little little rooms inside. So you can put your minis all in there. Put a mini in real quick. See the mini down there. Uh, there he is. So anyway, we're constructing the roof. I made several prototypes uh, because the tricky part is their slot and tabs, getting the internal measurements right. Because Dave Gratham does this really cool thing with his roof. He puts this edge around which you fold under to make eaves. But it means the space underneath where I'm going to put my ceiling um, has to be smaller, so it takes a little figuring out how to make everything fit together. Uh, so I made several prototypes, complete construction, bloody spot where I hurt my finger. Anyway, here we go. So, I'm going to make the roofs real fast. Um, so what you do, just like I said, is we need to fold it all. Like always, you're supposed to cut it out. I use my Silhouette Curio to cut everything out and to put an embossing tip to put uh, fold lines in so that they're pre-scored. It's not scored, it's embossed instead. Uh, no cuts, which I really like, which means doing less edging. So for example, these roofs, uh, because of this uh, technique that Dave Graffman has of eaves, have no visible edging except uh, there's going to be some along this edge. but. Uh, it's because it doesn't have any eaves on that side. So, where's my rolly roller? There it is. It's totally used for making all my folds nice and tight. Time to go. Very exciting. Um, this giveaway has, has caused a spike. I've got another two dozen followers from when I started just a few days ago. So it's been an experiment in social media marketing. I think some people might like getting a copy of this model, all delivered and all full flat. Okay, here we go. I use, uh, for those who haven't seen yet, I've been using a color shaper, which is a rubber tipped thing that's shaped like a brush, but it's not a brush, to spread out my glue. And my roller to roll out. Do this for the other roof. Same thing. It's got the heaves, this time on four sides. This is the roof here. The other one goes up against, that's only got three sides because it goes up against the, uh, the first floor, or the second floor. A lot of people are using edges and stuff, but the nice thing is my, uh, my cutter putting in the uh, embossing lines for the scoring gives me a really pretty easy place to, to figure out how to do, although sometimes it gets a little off, that's like it did in here. Off, so I have to adjust it. Um, I will answer any questions you propose on my uh, Instagram. I'm also on Facebook and on Twitter and on uh, Google Plus. 
Uh, I'm a big proponent of spreading the paper paper building train. This uh, a forum I participated in. If you're really interested in building buildings and paper minis, it's called Cardboard Warriors at ProBoards.com. Um, I'm active there. We just recently had a contest. Every we have a kind of friendly contest amongst the members to share what they've designed or what they've built. Uh, and as a kit bash competition, this is kit bashing. What I'm doing here is I'm taking these roofs right now are as exactly as Dave spec them. It's the way they come. You make them, and then you glue them in. But I'm not going to glue them in because I'm doing full flat. So I'm going to show you the trick I'm going to do. So there we go. I'm going to take these, put these out of sight here under a bunch of books to dry so that the eaves <laughs> go flat. But I prepared for this podcast or this. Uh, this stream by making some a few minutes ago. So I have some already nice and flattened and made because I'm making two of these. Uh, one of the fun things about this contest was I wanted to make this building for myself. And then I decided, well, I can make two copies almost as easily as one. So here's the edging I am going to do. Um, not the eaves don't necessarily come together evenly. And I'm going to glue in these parts, which are the ceilings and the tabs to connect them. Uh, when you assemble it to the rest of the building. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edge some of the visible white and along the edge of the eaves on the roof. You would not normally do this, this would not be normally visible, in fact it would interfere with glue, but since I want to, so you can see what I've done. And now when I put in these pieces, I don't have to worry about them being perfect. The, uh, the dark pen. And this is a Tombow number 57. It's a nice warm warm gray. Um, and so here's what I do. Same thing. I have uh, these tabs have little folds on them. We're also going to do the same thing on it. I'm going to paint these tabs in case because they're going to face outward when they're folded. So off chance the door, you know, the roof kind of pops off a little. You'll see this neutral gray color instead of white paper white. I'm also going to edge just in case some of them takes a close look at the ceiling. You'll see a nice uh, not white edge. Alright, oh, this is for uh, not for this roof. This one is for that roof, which is the one with four sides. So we're going to do that one first. But edging is always safe. So when you have uh, parts that might be exposed, use the same edging pen to color in areas that might be visible where the glue, when you glue two parts together. That's that's a nice way to get a nice finished look. And it's really easy, you can see, just run your pen, nice uh, brush pen is really nice because it gets in there. Uh, you can do it with batteries. Um, I, a lot of people like to use, um, uh, you know, uh, market markers like uh, the permanent markers and Crayola markers. I find they bleed too much with the paper I use, but so please make sure to test. If you're going to do edging, test your markers to see if they bleed in and or through to the to your beautiful printed textures on the other side. You don't want that to happen. All right, so here, let me show you the assembly. We're putting the glue together. So here is the roof with the uh, eaves glued over and pressed in under, under a book for about a half hour. I'm going to take these, these are ceiling tiles I invented, and put them in. I'm going to put two of them, I have them separate so that uh, when it folds I don't have double thickness right at, at the roof line. Um, and I will put those in right now. They don't have to be in perfectly. In fact, this looks a little bigger than I expected. How about this one? How's this one? Oop, those seams fold up. I forgot to edge this one. Hide the, if it shows, hide it with some of the pen. There we go. Just be paranoid about, I, I like to be a little paranoid about things showing. See, so that way, that's going to be tucked in. It's going to be, the wall's going to come right up to there. But if, you know, if it shows a little bit, you won't see white. You won't know where this is. Dropped it. Be right back. All right, glue time. You can also type questions. I can read them. I've got this thing running on selfie mode. 
turned sideways on my desk here. So that's nice. Spread the glue out. I like using this clear glue because um, it basically, with this rubber color shaper, as it's called, I basically make an adhesive sheet of paper pretty quickly. It's not too wet. A lot of you know, if you use too much, you'll you'll get some puckering from wetness, but it's not too wet. It does have some water in it, though. All right, that looks good. Uh, I'm gonna also edge that seam between, just to make it look nice when it's like on the tip. When I take it off to to put the thing on the table, I'm gonna use the pointy end. This tumblers have two ends: a, a stick end and a a pointy end and a brush end, something like that. There we go. So that's what that roof looks like. From the inside you see ceiling, and from the outside you see roof. Uh, since there are windows in, in the thing, you can you can see them. Also, when I'm done assembling, I know some tricks like moving, sticking in something through a wall so you can see inside the space while it's closed, which is kind of fun. Uh, one year I won a construction context by including photos like that. All right. Let me show you how this one works. For those who are in a hurry and don't need to see both, um, the other one's a little more complicated, but it's roughly the same. So here we go. Here's the space I'm going to put this over. It's really easy. Um, let's see if I can. Actually, if I do this one, you'll see it better in there on the camera. So there's a, a slot. If you've been following along, you know I have a little piece of clear plastic in there. So I've tucked it into the slot, and then I tuck it in the slot on the other side. Hang on, it's easier to do if I can see my light. I think I got it. No. There we go. Now I used to have a more complicated method, which included tabs on the peaked roof. I just found that they were too hard to manage, and you get a completely passable look without that effect. All right, so even if there's a little tiny gap, it doesn't matter. So there, that's a completely unglued roof uh, on that portion, and I'm going to continue the video while I do this portion. It's a little more complicated than I want to show, because in order to get structure, I have pockets over here on this wall and the original Dave Gratham did not have uh, this section this this section was uh, cut out and was all white because you were originally going to have glue tabs that glued onto the roof instead I extended it and the reason I extended it isn't so much for this side although you can see I just pasted in some more of their texture using a photo, photo editor it's so that when I have this room here that it has a wall I extended the wall down so it, it, it has a completely playable room. Otherwise, there's a big triangular gap in the wall there. So I did that specifically so that the upper floor could have a real room that uh, that it worked with, you know, that you could play in um, without looking like a big gap, construction gap. And and the reason they don't send the, he doesn't send the full walls and stuff is is uh, to save ink. I mean, if you why print something you're never going to use, but when you make an interior now you need that extra extra stuff right, I'm gonna set that aside while I work on the next one this is the same technique only slightly different uh, you notice one side here doesn't have the ease I need to edge there now because hypothetically you could, might be able to might peek up when it's tucked in and so that edge is going to tuck in on the wall over here Doo -doo. Here we go. We're at the glue phase. Oh, I need to edge these guys. So these guys have an extra tab besides the, um, the tab for the sides, the long sides. There's now a, a tab to tuck into that wall where I just showed you. I had to put the triangle back on that wall. So now um, the peak has something to sit on in both ends. One, it sits on an edge, and another one, it sits on two pockets um, on the wall. All right, oh, edge these. Pin. Again, my 
edging technique is pretty fast, but I am going to color the entire tab in case any of it shows because the roof is popping up during play or something. I don't need to do that for... Oh, I do. I guess I do need to do that for this tab because it could top, pop up on the outside. So I'll do that on the outside for that tab. Otherwise, assembly is roughly the same. Little tabs edged. Running out of ink in my 57, which means I have to go get one of my other ones soon. Like that pen. So, this time, the slot is going to go where there is no eaves. It, right, the eaves are all along that side, and the slot goes there. So, I'm going to glue that in. I'm going to put glue on all of it and glue it all in at once and roll it out. Part of the reason I'm doing these videos is I'm capturing them so that uh, when I release on cardboard borders, I'm going to release the cut files, which will have the outlines you can use to manually cut um, to make exactly this model, including all the little cuts for the windows if you have a cutter, which would be really handy, but you can turn those off. if You, you don't have to cut out the windows. That's just me showing off. Uh, I hope you saw, if you're following this, I hope you saw that uh, originally I recommended using this glue. I now, for, for gluing in the window panes, which are made of an acetate-like substance. Turns out that does not glue acetate, so don't do that. Uh, use, use some kind of spray fixative that will stick to acetate uh, for the middle layers there. I'm not using any middle layers on the roofs. This is sufficient. Oh, I forgot something I wanted to do on the roof, so I'll have to figure out what to do about that. I'm going to do something for, for the chimneys. Now I need to redesign my chimneys because I already glue all my roofs together. Actually, I didn't glue my other roof together. I might make the change on that one. So one of the advantages of making two versions of this, one for myself and one to give away, is I can make all the mistakes on the one I'm going to keep. When doing hacking, you often find, oh, wait, I forgot to do something I was supposed to do. Let me grab a better pen. Here's a black one. Slip that in there. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that nice little black spot. So now when it squeezes up, you don't see anything weird. It just looks like a black, black spot between the boards. All right, um, so that one's done. I'm gonna roll it a little bit to get some flatness. Um, after I'm done with this video, I am gonna slide these back between some books to get extra flat, but I don't wanna make you guys wait while I do that part. So here we go. Now, this is a little harder to assemble because um, I wanted to get the slots in the walls. And so I like having this one, a little spatula tool, I kind of open up these little slots a little bit, make it really easy for this stuff to hook in. So I'll start by putting in the far tab here. It's funny, I don't usually assemble it away from me, but I want you guys to see what's going on. Down, catch the tabs. That worked pretty well. That's good. Oh, get that tab in there. Nope. There we go. And now I'll come around this side since you've now seen that in, at work. Yeah, the tabs are all in place. That's good. So you guys have seen the final assembly of the outer frame, which is pretty cool. Open that tab. Get in there. Fiddly, fiddly. There we go. So there. Oh, there we go. It's actually my first first uh, assembly with the real pieces. Actually, I'm really happy with how that turned out. So look. Let's see. This is all a full flat model. All these pieces come apart. You know, I think I might just show you guys, improve it. Well, that's kind of a hint right there. Um, so there, I have some ideas for some more stuff to do for internal, but I'm, I'm not done done. But I could be done done right here. Um, there's a, a piece I'm missing, which is a, a full flat chimney. I think will be really nice to put on here. 
so I will redo a little bit of my uh, roof design. Let's see if I can tuck that in better. Um, to include two slots for a chimney to slip the little slots in. I forgot to do that in my hurry to get to you guys. Uh, but let, let's go ahead and see how much space this takes. So we'll take off the roof, we'll take out the floor with the interior, we'll take out some interior rooms, we'll take off that wall and that wall, and that wall and that wall and that wall, and stack them all up. Mm, stack, stack, stack. Stackity stack, stackity stack. So, worst possible stacking. Everything is, is stacked. I think that qualifies as a half inch. It's uh, not even. It's a little thicker. But you guys can judge for yourself. So, full flat. That will definitely fit in an envelope and go anywhere in the world. So get your friends, to, if they're interested in such things, to, uh, to join my Instagram. Uh, that will be the last update until I either do the chimney or I'm thinking about a custom fold flat staircase to include, which will, will allow for connection between the lower floor and the upper floor. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably do a fold flat staircase video next. Thanks for joining me. Bye.